All right, so problem number two is gonna be a loading and unloading problem, loading into the yielding region and then unloading. <clears throat> um, it might be shear, which is what this one is, uh, but definitely might be normal. So we're gonna look at a shear one right here, uh, but it might be normal. Okay, so first of all, I uh, think A, part A is kind of a, a, a side note. I mean, part A is not loading and unloading. So I can ask you some other problems, you know, with these, with these, especially some problems about, hey, what's the modulus of elasticity? What's the modulus of rigidity? What's the modulus of toughness? Uh, things like that. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> part A uh, says to calculate the average normal strain alongside AD. So AD, let's look very closely right there. AD, its original length is 400 inches. Its new length is, what is that new length? 400 squared, let's 400 squared, three squared, take the square root. Its new length, 400.0112. All right, so the normal strain, the delta L over L, L the delta L point 0.0112 over the original L, uh, 2.81 times 10 to the negative 5 inches per inch. So there's the normal strain of side AD. It's been a while since we've done this, hasn't we? Normal strain is delta L over L. We're looking at lengths and how lengths are elon stretching and or compressing. All right, so normal strain is delta L over L. All right, B, the shear strain at corner A. So the shear strain at corner A. Remember at corner A, think, look at all different corners have different positives and negatives, but for corner A, a positive would be a decreasing in angle. So yes, this is positive. So I need to add up that angle and that angle, right? Let's maybe zoom in here. Let me add up that angle and that angle. Let me call this gamma one and gamma two. Let's see, I could do tangent, but remember these are small angles. We can use a small angle approximation. So both of these are positive. That will add up to my strain. Gamma one, look at that, is three over 400. Gamma two, two over 300. 0.01417 radians is my shear strain, is my shear strain. Okay, now it says, okay, calculate, and don't estimate, let's calculate the shear stress required to cause this shear strain. So for a shear strain of 0 0.01417, what is the shear stress that, that causes this, right? What stress causes this? Well, I've got to look at the stress-strain curve, the stress-strain relationship. So if I have a strain of 0.01417, what is the stress? What is the stress right here? You can look at similar triangles or you can do some interpolation. Let's interpolate. Let's say uh, we could do this a number of ways, but 60 over 40 minus stress over 40, I mean 60 minus 40, over stress that I'm looking for, minus 40. So I did top minus bottom over middle minus bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing. Top for strain, sorry, 0 0.02 minus 0 0.005 over middle minus 0 0.005. Careful with your math, careful with your decimal points. Uh, it, however you need to interpolate, this isn't really, I'm not really teaching interpolation in this class. I'm not teaching how to find that point right there, even though I feel like I do that. You should be able to find this stress, and let's make sure it makes sense, 52.22 KSI. This number, uh, it's a little bit closer to 0 0.02 than it is 0 0.005. My stress should be a little bit closer to 60 than it is to 40, um, and it is. All right, so there's my stress right there. Then, if the shear stress is removed from the beam, calculate the elastic recovery and permanent deformation of the cross-section. So what happens when it is removed? 
it unloads at the same slope as the elastic region. And so I like to think of this as my um, unloading triangle right here. My unloading triangle right here has a height of 52.2, has a base, it, it, this is the elastic recovery, elastic recovery. That's how much it, it, it bounces back from being stretched. The rest, though, is the permanent deformation, the permanent set. So if I know that the slope right here is the same slope of this, what is the slope of this? Slope is rise over run. So this is part D. You can either think of it as the same slope or think of these as similar triangles. Same, same thing, right? Slope, similar triangles. Uh, and so this would be... 52.22 over the elastic recovery. So the elastic recovery, 0 0.0065 radians. So that's how much it, you know, bounces back. How much is it permanently deformed? Well, I was over here at 0 0.01417. I was over here at 0 0.01417, and I bounced back by 0 0.0065, so where am I left? What am I left with? 0 0.01417 minus 0 0.0065. So I still have a deformation of 0 0.0077 radians. So my permanent set, 0 0.0077 radians, okay? Um, so let's step back and look at what we did. You know, this one, A, B, C, D, you know, t take each of these as small problems in themselves. Um, I, I'm probably not going to just tell you the strain is 0 0.01417, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a figure. I'm going to make you calculate that, 0 0.01417, uh, and then got to find out where the stress is. If your stress is not in the yielding region, then... You probably did something wrong. I'm going to double, triple check that our stress is going to be in the yielding region. So make sure you're in this region right here. My stress, I interpolated. You can interpolate. You can look at similar triangles to find that height, 12.22. Add it on top of the 40. So you get 52.22 as a stress. And then it unloads at the same slope, so it's a similar triangle as the elastic region. And so if I know the height, then I can find the base. So this base was 0 0.0065. So that means it was being stretched to 0 0.01417. It comes back by 0 0.0065. So that's the elastic recovery. Recovery. 0.0065, so it is permanently, it is still has, even though, so it ends, it ends at this point right here. Even though there's no more stress, it still has some strain. It is still permanently deformed by 0 0.0076 radians is our permanent set, all right?